Thank you very much, Eliud. Please, let's take our seats. Asante Nisana. Um, Cabinet Secretary for ICT and Digital Economy, Eliud Awalo. Uh, our sister, Immaculate Kasait. Our data commissioner. Ambassador, my good friend from Germany, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Hamjambo? Mambo Niaje? You're too quiet. <clears throat> uh, first, let me congratulate Immaculate for a wonderful presentation. I learned a few things as I listened to her about the whole scope and space around data and data protection. Congratulations, Madam, for doing a good job. Um, I'm very happy to join you this morning on this occasion as we observe the International Data Privacy Day, as it gives us an excellent opportunity to reflect and reason about possibilities constraints, opportunities, as well as threats that define the field of privacy, especially in matters data. When the first such day was marked over four decades ago, Kenya had not plugged into the information technology data universe that was just taking off then. Today, we have not only caught up with the most advanced jurisdictions, we are poised to seize leadership in innovative domains that are destined to define the digital future and the knowledge economy. Like the rest of the world, we are in the grip of the fourth industrial revolution that is underway, which has radically changed our world and our lives within a very short time. Cumulative technological developments now happening over the span of a few years routinely outstrip by far the radical transformations and historic progress achieved over centuries in what has been documented as the Industrial Revolution. Life, work, society, and government are all undergoing unprecedented forms and rates of change owing to connectivity, automation, artificial in intelligence, nanotechnology, and robotics. As a result, all sorts of new possibilities emerge every day, whilst traditional definitions of work and leisure are being challenged and redefined on a continuous basis. It is a proud moment for a forward-looking nation like Kenya to be able to embrace this brave new world and make our way in it with the awareness that we must move fast in order to develop the capacity to derive maximum benefits from its opportunities. We can do a lot of things in countless different and much better ways that satisfy infinitely diverse requirements of many people around the globe. The barriers to real-time interac interaction on a global scale no longer exist. People can work from anywhere, and many activities that were considered leisure are now lucrative lines of work. At the same time, this brave new world is vulnerable to antisocial agencies on a much more devastating scale. Every time we connect, we become exposed to relentless waves of attempted attacks and breaches of security. Data, as the currency of the new age, is ever in demand, and all sorts of entities employ all manner of strategies to obtain and leverage on it. It is the duty of the government to deploy necessary resources and remain vigilant in order to support and protect entrepreneurs, innovators, 
and other workers in the digital economy from fraudsters, terrorists, traffickers of illicitly obtained data, and all manner of criminals who populate the online underworld. It is worthwhile, therefore, to reflect about the opportunities as well as the threats present in the digital economy on one hand, and the methods and strategies of promoting and protecting legitimate actors while deterring and suppressing malevolent agencies on the other, on the other hand. Data protection must serve the greater interest of the public by ensuring that we have sufficient information for effective and efficient delivery of public goods and services. However, we must also ensure that criminal elements do not hide under data protection or exploit it to perpetuate crime or evade paying tax. The context in which we reflect on this tire of tension matters. We are an open and democratic society founded on the principles of constitutionalism and the rule of law. We are also a market economy dedicated to entrepreneurial freedom and consumer choice as the foundational principle of wealth and success. We must allow maximum entrepreneurial liberty in order to reap the benefits of the free market economy and advance human well-being. Yet, we cannot permit the vulnerable to be victimized by fraud, exploitation, and abuse. We have an obligation to defend national sovereignty and protect society from cyber terrorists and online criminals. Yet, we must not use security and protection as excuses to claw away the fundamental rights and freedoms of citizens, especially on the matter of access to information. It seems to me, then, that it is important for all stakeholders in the data sector to always be conscious of limits. What are the constitutionally recognized and practically unavoidable limits to freedom of expression, freedom of information, and the right to privacy, as well as the state's authority in respect to all this. There must be a balance. I think what, what I'm trying, the statement I'm, going to, I'm trying to make here is there must be a balance between the state's responsibility to make sure that citizens have access to information in accordance with the Access to Information Act, but also protect citizens and whatever information that is private from criminals and other actors in that space. So there must be a balance between access to information on one hand and protection of privacy on another hand and the nexus between the, those two, the nexus between access to information and protection of data and information is the balance that will give us the right equilibrium for government to access legally useful information for public good and for citizens. And there are details and information to be protected for, from people who use it for other purposes other than that which is legal. And uh, th that's the balance that the ministry, the various departments, and especially our dear commissioner must keep balancing so that we are in good space. In order for Kenya to realize the maximum potential of the digital superhighway, we must have a clear data management regime that is rational, effective, and promotes efficiency. It has to be promotive of our agenda for the digital economy, because progressively, 
it is now absolutely clear that the next billionaires will be on the digital economy space. And we must provide sufficient latitude for access of whatever information that is necessary for us to grow our space for entrepreneurs, for business people, for investors in the digital space. And precisely the reason why we are expanding the digital superhighway so that we can bring on board millions of Kenyans by making, uh, making it possible for them to access um, uh, internet from all corners of Kenya. They can transact with the government. They can do business. They can create. They can innovate. And they can do business on the digital space. And precisely the reason why I set up the ministry that has digital economy as one of its big mandates. The government of Kenya is committed to working with all stakeholders to expand the space for creativity and innovation through the promotion of freedom of expression and also intellectual property rights. It is our intention to ensure that Kenya finally reaps its overdue dividend from the heavy investment in ICT infrastructure made over the last two decades. With six submarine fiber optic cables offering broadband connectivity, over 9,000 kilometers of terrestrial fiber optic connecting nearly in all county headquarters, geographical broadband coverage of 56% and mobile broadband penetration of 96% we are putting finishing touches on the policy and infrastructural framework that will switch on a historic explosion of productivity and competitiveness in our digital economy and in our entire Kenyan economy. I am looking forward to our commitment that in the next six months we will have 5,000 government services available on the digital space. Already, just to uh, put it in context, we had 300 government services um, as of two weeks ago. We have increased that to 600. We have doubled in the last two weeks. We now have 600 government services available online. And we are well on course in ensuring that we have 5,000 government services in the next six months. And I've also asked the Ministry of ICT to also work on a digital identity so that the big Huduma thing that never was, we can finally have as Kenya a digital identity. And I have told my good friend Eliud that by the end of this year, Kenyans must be able to identify themselves digitally. It is not, it is not the work of government to issue IDs. It is the work of government to identify Kenyans. Over the next five years, we shall construct another 100,000 kilometers of national fiber optic network to achieve universal broadband connectivity in the country. We want to enhance government services delivery by digitizing and wherever possible, automating critical processes and by migrating 80% of services online, as I have said. And we are developing the digital master plan and establishing a regional app for, to promote the large scale development of software for export. We expect the digital superhighway to play a tremendous role as a fully fledged productive sector on its own and an enabling infrastructure for the universal health coverage, agriculture, MSME, and manufacturing pillars of our bottom up economic transformation agenda for the transformation of our country. And just to state that we already have registered 
5 million farmers who will participate this year in our subsidized fertilizer uh, platform that will be available online as a mechanism of eliminating leakage, pilferage, corruption, and inefficiency in the delivery of fertilizer and especially of our subsidy program. Data then does play a critical role in our development agenda and will play an even greater and ever increasing role going into the future. How we engage with data matters as a commodity, public as well as private good, data is essential. We must therefore embark on a robust process of enriching our institutional framework to ensure that our transformational agenda is aligned with the principle of personal data protection and that Kenya expeditiously concludes the process of domesticating the African Union Convention on Cyber Security and Personal Data Protection. For this reason, the Cabinet Secretary for Information and the Digital Economy has been tasked with taking up this matter with the Attorney General and the leadership of the National Assembly so that we can be in tandem with the rest of the continent. Data protection is critical to an economy and a state that is institutionalizing, digitizing, institutionally, in, intentionally, sorry, digitizing. We are committed to supporting the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner to ensure that it rapidly acquires the necessary capacity to effectively perform its functions. The full implementation of the Data Protection Act 2019 is overdue. Our commitment to competitiveness, innovation, digitization, automation, and the digital economy requires a credible and legitimate facilitator to anchor investor confidence. And I'm confident that the Office of Data Protection will give us that much needed value. This facilitator must be the commissioner. In order to be legitimate, the office must always demonstrate integrity, fairness, and commitment to promote the growth and simultaneously development of Kenya as a competitive digital economy and a global leader in data protection. The role is to promote, not inhibit, and to facilitate, not obstruct. In playing this role, the commissioner must pay due attention to cross-border dimensions of data protection. The, data, the National Data Center must therefore be equipped with the necessary capacity to discharge both dual roles. The launch today of the Data Protection Registration System is an important step in this direction and it is highly commendable and appropriate that the system, which was developed by Kenyan youth, has been successfully tested and piloted. And I want to say a very big congratulations to those who have put this together. I'm also happy to note that the development of the system went together with the certification of 1,417 data handlers from both the public and private sector. This signals that we are now ready to inaugurate Kenya's data protection regime. In the spirit of this important day, and in line with the government's commitment to safeguarding the privacy of citizens, all ministries, departments, and agencies are directed to henceforth align their strategies, systems, and processes with the provisions of the data protection laws. I also call upon county governments to pay attention to this development and take appropriate measures within their constitutional mandate to achieve a unified wall of government approach to data protection. I now declare, ladies and gentlemen, with a lot of pride, the data protection registration system officially launched as we celebrate this great day. Thank you and God bless you.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, if we can just give another warm clap right there. Your Excellency, with your permission,